Well, hi there. Welcome back. You here with old Barry. Uh, as always, I want to keep our listeners and subscribers up on what I call useful knowledge. Uh, not anymore on the mundane about the Fauci's and the Gateses and this BS about this so-called tremendously deadly virus. Um, if you're still stuck on that, well, so be it. But uh, you're going down the wrong path and you're headed in for a slippery slope of a lot of devastation in the near future. However, I want to bring up a point that um, to me it kind of rolls off uh, like it rolls off uh, wa like water off a duck's back by now about how many people initially think that my suggestions are just so off the wall they're crazy but yet they all come true, or the highest percentages of them anyway. If I were to tell you a little under a year ago that almost the entire planet would be walking around behind useless face masks to shield themselves from a virus that is no more powerful no more deadly than any influenza season. Just look up the stats, do it yourself. Actually, I recently did it for somebody, a rather high-ranking official here who I was having coffee with. And uh, it was interesting because even though I showed them right off the packages, right off the packages that the masks were useless, went right over their head. And this is, this is an educated person here we're talking about. Indoctrinated might be a better word, but we'll leave that up to the you know to uh, 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 you guys to decide. Then I went and I actually showed them physical hard evidence that the influenza of 218, your normal seasonal flu, your influenza flu of 2018, killed double the amount, more than double the amount of what this so-called deadly coronavirus did. Up to date, we're in August now, more than double. Do you know they still looked at me like as if I'm trying to show a dog a card trick, explain it to them? People understand something, okay? You can teach a parrot to talk, but it doesn't mean that it knows what the heck it's talking about. You can have graduated from some of the most Ivy League universities. Well, you've been well indoctrinated, I'll give you that much. It doesn't mean you understand how economies work. It doesn't mean you have the slightest clue of understanding how the big transmission, as we mentors describe it, is linked together. How everything is linked. Everything. Economies, politics, countries. And yes, people. So have uh, it just blew me away. A passport that under two years ago was in passport ranking one is now outranked. That's right. A U.S. and U.K. passport is outranked by some of the countries I'm going to bring up in just a moment. I want to continue on and uh, suggest that anybody who hasn't gone to the Passport Index website, which describes uh, the various countries that allow you in and various requirements of visas on the countries that don't, um, and, prov and they also a uh, full list of the power rankings, I want to just give you some brief information that I quickly obtained over it. Again, it's up to you to do your own research. But if you do not recognize how fast things are changing, I've gone back to only 2018, so it's a, more or less a year and a half ago. That's not a long time now. Here is the stats of today, comparing 2018 to 2020 on both UK and American passports. In 2018, if you had a UK or an American passport, there were... Uh, 147 countries that allowed you in with no visa requirements whatsoever. That's what your typical travelers would, uh, would uh, expect to see and what you're used to. 
where you would go and you go to the country uh, that you're leaving, America or UK, you get an exit stamp on your passport. When you arrive to your destination, you go through customs, they ask you the same silly questions. You get an entry stamp and you're basically free to go to enjoy, whether it's visiting family, a vacation, or even a business trip, okay? 147 countries, no visa. There were 43 countries that required visas, and 42, I believe, it was out of the UK. There was one less. Both passports fell into the power ranking of one, the highest there was. Now, fast forwarding a year and a half later to today, there is only 48 countries in the world that will allow you entry with a US or a UK passport without some sort of visa requirement. There are 34 countries that do require a visa upon arrival. That means you have to pre-get it and bring it with you and then it's show it to them. They keep it and they stamp it along with your passport, okay? It's hard as this is to believe, and I've double-checked it. You do your own research. There are now 108 countries that require pre-approval before they'll even let you through customs. As hard as that is. hard as that is to believe. As hard as it is to believe with an American or a UK passport, you will now not even be permitted to get through customs from 108 countries that didn't exist in 2018. So when you use words as a weapon on a previous video and understand where I'm coming from, you'll not only see the chaos, you not only see the fear, the violence, all of this is escalating to abnormal ratios but now you're starting to see borders being closed to you for the first time most of your life. Never seen them. Some of the countries that are currently outranking a U.S. and U.K. passport are Belgium, Finland, Luxembourg, Spain, Japan, Australia, Malta, Iceland, the Czech Republic, Slovenia, Estonia, Poland, Hungary, South Korea, Slovakia, Cyprus, Romania, Croatia, Bulgaria, Ukraine, Siberia, United Arab Emirates, Bosnia, Albania, just to name a few. So you holders of only one passport are beginning to hopefully recognize how doors are being closed abruptly. There are many countries still offering citizenships where you can buy your citizenship or invest into the country. However, we also mentioned many of those would be escalating in price and many of the countries uh, will be requiring many more loopholes to be filled, uh, many more uh, hoops to be jumped through and uh, much higher requirements, much stringent. The requirements have gone up immensely uh, in the Dominican Republic as well. So the days of, like I say, napping under the palm tree and coming in on a plane and staying as long as you want and leaving and having a willy-nilly carte blanche because you own a U.S. or a U.K. passport, they are so far gone. I'll use this term for probably the first time in my recording history. Welcome, part of what we are called you. This is going to be a rude wake-up call. So many that have been birth-chipped, been entitlement-minded. Nobody wants you anymore. And even though it was artificially inflated because of the COVID. That's what's doing this. It shows you how powerful words are when they're used as a weapon. Anyway, this is brought to you to help in terms of current research and current useful information. Shying away from repeating the same old, what I call now mundane information about 
Gates and Fauci, the question becomes, you ain't waking up nobody. They got to wake up themselves. Realize it, learn it, and you don't get stuck in the FEMA bed next to the idiot. Otherwise, like I say, these are all subjective decisions. We're only bringing information. Hopefully, make you more informed. Until next time, this is old Barry in DR saying, happy travels. <laughs>